This is Bruce Tom from Bat Machine, and in this video, he's going to share with us some of his very first, very primitive rifle builds. <laughs> Gavin Goo here from UltimateReloader.com. I'm here at the personal shop of Bruce Tom, owner of Bat Machine. This is pretty cool. We were standing around yesterday after work looking at through his rifle safe and you turned up some really old relics and I thought this yeah. would be a fun opportunity <laughs> for you to tell the story of kind of how you got into this crazy business. Right. So where did it all start? Well, rea realistically, it all started because my mom wouldn't let my dad buy me a 22. <laughs> so I had to make one. And uh, first thing I made was I don't actually have the first one. This was the second one, but mm -hmm. I made with a hacksaw and a file in my dad's garage, basically this rifle. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I didn't know about machine tools. Mm -hmm. We had a drill press and uh, a few hacksaw blades. So how did you come up with the design? It's been so long ago, I don't remember. It was something I figured I could make. Yeah. Ba you know, it's simple. Um, I don't remember. I'm sure this one's chambered with a drill bit. <laughs> <laughs> I got my dre my Dremel tool extraction slot right here. Yep, I can <laughs> I can see that. Um, yeah. And this is what what chambering is this one? Twenty two rimfire. Okay. Yep. So I got my twenty two rimfire. Yeah. And actually, it shoots pretty good. So <laughs> the first barrel actually was a I drilled a kingpin I found of, in my uncle's garage on a drill press and got a Brownells catalog and found barrel liners and glued a barrel liner in. Wow. And then I uh, showed that to Ed's Gunnatorium. Anybody in the Spokane area that's older will remember Ed's Gunnatorium. It was up on the north side of Spokane Valley. And uh, Anyway, he had barrel blanks, so I bought a barrel blank, an actual barrel blank. And, uh, <laughs> As in a rifled tube. <laughs> yeah, rifled tube. And that's, that's what this is. Oh, gotcha. So your first one was mostly, did you say hacks on it file? It was all hacks on file. Okay. And then this This was... one, I had, was a sophomore in high school. Okay. And I finagled. I wasn't supposed to be in the machine tools, but I finagled the shop teacher into letting me probably chamber with a drill bit <laughs> in a lathe on this one. Okay. And I was able to use the little closing mill for some of the work on this one. The rest of it's hacksaw on file. Wow. And crude woodwork. You've got so a the dovetail scope mount yeah, here? Yeah. That is quite something. Okay. So this is number two, this guy right yep, here. Yep. Okay. High school time. So then this one was the following year when I got full access to the machine tools. <laughs> and uh, first bolt action, carved it out of a block of unknown steel, but uh, <laughs> believe uh, it, was a, it was a cylinder rod, a hydraulic cylinder rod, so it's probably pretty decent material. So this is literally like bat machine 0000001 yeah, right here. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, a... Another gut, Ed's Gunnatorium, I splurged and bought a reamer from Climber in okay. 222 for this one. But they wouldn't let me put the, they wouldn't let me put the uh, barrel on in a high school machine shop. Imagine that. Wow. I mean, so I had to buy a lathe. So I bought a South Bend lathe and figured out how to use that reamer and uh, fit a barrel. I had no mentors. This was all stuff I was figuring out on my own. And obviously there was no YouTube in 1980. <laughs> did, you, did you have books like the South Bend, mm. how to run a lathe or anything like that? I think I did find one of those in the archives in the high school machine shop. Did, did you take sh metal shop? I did have school? metal shop, but okay. this is the deal. My first, my sophomore teacher was actually a machinist. Okay. But he decided to go back and work in machine shops instead of dealing with a bunch of kids that took shop class just because they didn't want to do real work. Can you blame work. him? Well, not really. <laughs> but I wish he would have stayed. I could have learned a little faster. Sure. So yeah. the, my junior year, it was a retired wood shop teacher that knew nothing about any of the machine tools. He knew how to weld slightly. Mm -hmm. And all I knew is what I had been able to glean from the teacher the year before. But I became the go-to 
in the shop for any knowledge, which I had virtually none. <laughs> Everything I was figuring out could, on my yeah, own. You could figure out how to make it work, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah. So now, now hold, hold on. Okay. Look, you pretty much built this whole thing. Yeah. Let's go through this. You built the stock. Yep. Carved you the stock out. Machined the action from a solid hydraulic cylinder rod, which is yep. really, really cool. You didn't do the barrel blank. You, I you machined it, but I bought it. it. It was yeah. It was and rifled. actually, I contoured that too. Okay, so it was it was a straight profile. It was or a something straight like that. cylinder. It was yeah. it was already a twenty two cal. Yep. Uh, rifled. Uh, you built the bolt. Yep. You built the trigger, trigger. mechanism. Mm -hmm. Trigger guard. Yep. And was that from a billet? Uh, yep. yep. Hunk of aluminum. It looks yep. like. Mm -hmm. So. I believe that was just hacksaw file work. So most people, like me, will start with just chambering a barrel, but you just thought, hey, let's go all in here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think, I just did it. <laughs> you just did it. You saw a challenge. I found a Remington butt, pat, butt plate. Yep. Kind of use that as my profile for the stock. So, you know, the caulking piece and all the internals yeah. of the bolt, was there, do you remember anything about how you figured that all out or how you designed it? I believe there, Weatherby was putting prints are not prints, but cutaway drawings of okay. their their, you know, Mark IV action. Yep. On magazine covers, so I kind of I, I kind of studied them a lot, tried wow. to figure out what they were doing. That's I would say that was probably kind of my inspiration for wow. design. And it's kind of it, it's, you know, you like my bolt stop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have to take it out. Yeah, you have to unscrew it. <laughs> but I gave it a little knurling there with a the file. Yeah, I mean. So you know what? It's kind of—it's not a nine lug, but it's, it's full diameter bolt. It's kind of inspired by yeah. the nine lug. I can see yeah. the handwork that you did on, like the extractor yeah, here. Crude handwork. No, there's no ejector. <laughs> no ejector. Yeah. Do you not need that? <laughs> no. That would come later. You got to right? get it first shot. So you had to weld this on, obviously, yeah. the bolt handle. Mm -hmm. It's very tactical. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great that you still have this, and it still shoots. Yeah. I haven't, shot, I haven't shot it for who knows how long, but we'll do that. It obviously doesn't have a scope on it anymore. Next, next visit, maybe. That's awesome. So then, uh, so that was the beginning of my junior year. Mm -hmm. By the end of my junior year, I built this one. Actually, I built two of these. I built one for my cousin too, just mm -hmm. like it. Except for he had to have the Monte Carlo stock. Mm -hmm. You know, the Weatherby influence of mm -hmm. the. 70s and 80s. So what is this guy? 243. 243 win. Pretty much similar to design, just scaled up, mm -hmm. bolt diameter, etc. So. Is this your safety back here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You had a tang, safety. On tang there. safety wow. even on this one. Yeah. And and an ejector. Look at that ejector. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're getting fancy now. Yeah. Quick progression. Yep. Now this dovetail uh, scope ring setup here, was that something that you had seen? No, somewhere? I just thought it was a good idea. It's like, you know, people talk about their scope rings sliding backwards mm -hmm. in the day and it's like, well, I'll just cut the dovetail the other way. Put a set screw in to secure it. And it's pretty cool. It works. Yeah. It worked. Again, I haven't shot that in years. But so these are real early 80s then? Yeah. These guys. 81. High school. Okay. 1981. Gotcha. <laughs> Let's go, come forward in time a little so bit. So forward in time. Now I have moved, I've been through trade school and I'm working as a tool maker. And uh, by this time I had acquired, so my senior year in high school, I didn't build any rifles. My senior year, I built a milling machine. What? <laughs> <laughs> Not as big as Bridgeport, but Kind of, it was, I think it was a table width was like six by 30. So would mom and dad not buy you a milling machine? And you... No. <laughs> My mom and dad weren't rich. I just had, I, I mowed lawns and had yeah. a sort of once a week paper job. So I had a friend in, in college that was like you. He wanted to build his own lathe because of the challenge of yeah. building a machine tool from from nothing basically. Yeah. Well, I'd been, the only reason I was able to buy a lathe is I'd been saving money for a new mm -hmm. dirt bike. And so that's how I bought, I, <laughs> and actually, so I bought that lathe and then I bought a lathe that was 
in a basket case, basically. It was a LeBlanc that somebody had started to rebuild the, the ways it had been re-machined. Mm -hmm. And then they'd lost some of the parts. They'd lost the cross slide of all things. Uh -oh. Anyway, so I bought it for a few hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I finished rebuilding it and sold it to a local guy. And then, uh, then I bought my dirt bike. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And so yeah, that, that my senior year was totally involved building milling machine. It took me the entire year. Wow. It was all from uh, weldments. I had no idea what I was doing, but it did work. <laughs> and I did use it for like, a year and a half, and then I bought a Cincinnati Horizontal, and then, you know, I know this is all in my mom and dad's garage. And, and later, you bought a Cincinnati Horizontal for I me. I bought another one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nostalgia, That's I a, think. So tell me more about this rifle. Oh, so the falling yeah, block. Yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. So I had, uh, I had the Cincinnati, and I had a vertical bridge port that was in Duma, Italian-made copy of a bridge port, mm -hmm. and uh, by that time I had gone through, I was on my fourth lathe, I had, uh, I'd upgraded from South Bend to a Taiwan piece of crap, <laughs> and that had the LeBlanc for a little while before I sold it, and then I bought a Hendy, H-E-N-D-E-Y, they, they went out of, Barbara Coleman bought them in the 50s, and they went out of business shortly thereafter, hmm. but uh, they were good, originally from Torrington, Connecticut, I believe, hmm. good old machine. Fairly wore out by the time I got it, but mm -hmm. I, I actually had that lathe till about 2002 mm -hmm. in, in bat machine. We, wow. used, we used it for chambering for years. Wow. Um, so I had that machine and I got enthralled with falling blocks just because of making a short little rifle. Mm -hmm. You lose all the length of a bolt action. So I started messing. This is not my first falling block. This is about, this is number three as far mm -hmm. as designs of falling blocks. But I actually made, I think about 14 of these, sold probably a dozen wow. of them. If between, you have one of these, please drop a comment. <laughs> between 19, uh, <laughs> 1988 and, oh, 1992. Three probably mm -hmm. that time frame. Hmm. And Beautiful wood on this one. Yeah, so they're, they're, they're real, real simple. Trigger housed in the in the block. Mm -hmm. Trying to make everything really short. Trigger is a real simple mechanism, hmm. like you know, just kind of like a, a single action pistol mm -hmm. type mechanism. Mm -hmm. um, they shoot really good. This one was originally a 22 Cheetah. Sent a lot of ground squirrels to their happy heaven in a <laughs> cloud of mist. <laughs> right now it's a 17 WSM. Very cool. But yeah, they're, so one of, the, one of the things about this rifle that was, a, this design was a little bit different from falling blocks of the day. You notice that scope mount? Yeah. It's Sticking totally forward. free floating off the yeah. receiver. And there's a hanger for the forearm as well. Hmm. So the barrel is totally free floated. Hmm. And uh, yeah, they shot really well. That's cool. So then what happened after that is I actually made one of these for a local guy here in Spokane who since passed away, Dennis Otmar. Hmm. And he brought over a bunch of bench rest rifles mm -hmm. in the back of his pickup one day. And I looked at those and I was like, I got to have one. But of course, I'm not buying one. I'm <laughs> right. making one. <laughs> right. <laughs> so... I made basically uh, the SV length action that bat customers would be familiar with. It had a smaller diameter bolt like the early Nasika actions that mm -hmm. Glenn Harrison was making. And so I built my first bench rest rifle, went to my first bench rest match in 1994. And uh, I managed to take like fourth place or something in the 100 yard. Wow. I didn't have a clue what I was doing, but the gun shot good. <laughs> Remember what cartridge you were shooting? Oh, 6 PPC. 6 PPC. It's, it, it's king in the short range yep. bench rest. Yep. So this one is one I recently built for myself. It's a 17 Mach 4. Thanks to Todd Kindler got me hooked on that back in the, I've, I don't know, I think this is probably the fourth one of these I've built for myself. Last one I had that had a really beautiful piece of walnut on it. Another guy just had to have it. So I was like, well, you know, I can build another one. So I sold it because I had this beautiful piece of maple. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is just tremendous. 
So it's the perfect ground school caliber, in my opinion. So you went to your bench rest match. Yeah, went to my bench rest match, and I met a guy by the name of Tom Dixon there. Mm -hmm. And Tom Dixon and another one of the older gentlemen that were shooting there, they're like, they look at this young kid, and I don't know what they really thought, but they they like, they ordered actions from me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I built them some actions. They went on to do really well with them in the local clubs. And then yep. about, and some of the guys back east had heard about me from another local guy that I had built a real big action, which would be our Model L now. Hmm. Um, for the thousand yard venturist guys. Gotcha. And so uh, Bruce Bear had ordered a couple and Dave Tooley had ordered a couple. Mm -hmm. And uh, they kind of, I don't know, started a little following of stuff back there and I kept getting more orders from these guys and this would have been, well, between 94 and 96. And still, I had- Still on manual machines at oh, this point? Oh, all manual machines, yeah. yeah. Okay. In, this, in this shop, actually. Yeah. Moved here in 1990. Okay. In just the other side of this wall. Yeah. <laughs> and, few more machines than before, but all crammed in there. And because uh, my wife wanted to park inside in the wintertime. Yeah. Know, this was I the garage. Can't blame her. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I had about a year backlog doing this part time at that point, working 50 hours a week as a tool maker still. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally I was like, you know what? Let's see. Let's see if we can make this work. So I, in 1996, uh, January 1, 1996, Got my incorporated permit and quit my job and January 1st started doing it full time. And then Tom Dixon, that was one of the first customers, he came to work for me six months later. And uh, he was really essential in, in bat machine growing because he was retired, didn't really need a job and he loved to shoot bench rests and travel to the big matches. And so mm -hmm. he really got bat machine and he was a good shooter. Not, I mean, mm -hmm. it wasn't just that he was a, he's a great guy, big teddy bear of a guy and people liked him, you mm -hmm. know, he's a real personal person and a good shooter. And yeah, so he really got the short range bench rest guys introduced to what we were doing and, mm -hmm. and the rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, bench so. rest quality actions, and now you've diversified. Into, we, we, we've gone through the model lineup. It's rather extensive. You know, my favorite is probably the TR, which is the tactical action. Mm -hmm. And so now if people in the PRS world, NRO Hunter world, want yeah. something tactical, but with the, uh, the DNA. Built with a mindset that we'd put into the bench rest yeah. actions. Yeah. Yep. Built just the same. Yep. So. It's really, really good stuff. So this is really inspiring. You know, if, if, if you want to take up gunsmithing, build your own rifles, I've done it in terms of I, chambering. It's, yeah. it's very rewarding. Nothing yeah. like this. On a but. personal level, it, it is. I mean, I still, <laughs> I still enjoy machining. Mm -hmm. It's like I don't necessarily run, enjoy running a business, but <laughs> <laughs> I do enjoy machining. Um, yeah. Maybe that's why you're still doing it, though. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. yeah. It's not just money. It's a passion. Oh, no. Yeah, definitely not money. Yeah. Definitely not money. Yep. But that's really yeah. awesome. Well, if you all have questions for Bruce about how he got started or about these specific rifles that we showed in the stories, please drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. You've inspired me too. I got <laughs> I got to think about how I'm going to up my game and maybe I'll build a receiver for a bolt action rifle for fun with my manual machines. Sounds like a Might good challenge well. to me. Yeah. yeah. You'll find out what we go through. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm a manufacturer, so I can, I, I can yeah. put my serial number on there. And yeah. 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 CNC makes life uh, much simpler mm -hmm. building actions, but they're still to build them to the bench rest level. There's a lot that goes into it mm -hmm. that you don't really see and you can't totally understand until you're doing it. Yeah. So, well, you've truly evolved this into something that started out very basic and is now something that's yeah. world class. So that's totally yeah. awesome. Thank you for showing us. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, that concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up.
I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not going to want to miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.